Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome into Guest Blade number 30. My God, can you believe we've reached number 30 already? Oh man, this is insane. What a crazy year 2013 has been. And uh, thank you to all of you for all the incredible support that you've shown me, uh, both with just subscribing to my channel, watching my videos, commenting. I love reading your comments. And uh, also, you know, supplying these great knives for the Guest Blade segments. Uh, right now, we're going to do a part two for Curtis Knives Guest Blade. We just got finished doing the uh, BMF. If you haven't watched that already, please go do so because it's, it's, uh, it's a bad mother, man. <laughs> it's a bad mother flipper. Right now, we're going to be doing direct from the maker, directly from David Curtis, the Cruise Evo. Now, what you're going to see here has already been sold uh, the person that ended up buying it from the auction that Dave ran it was the same person, believe it or not, that won the auction as well for the uh, BMF that I reviewed and was kind enough to let me, uh, to allow Dave to continue what he planned on doing, which was sending them to me. So I could do a little bit of photography and play with them and do these videos and let people see what he's coming out with, what these cool new things are. Now, he's already made a good run of the Cruise Evos. He's already got a few out there. Uh, I believe he sold a few direct. I think one or two went over to Tony and Eric uh, over at uh, North to South Knives. But he's going into a full production run. Now, what you're going to see here is a very, very rare piece. Uh, number one, for the selection of materials. But number two, the fact that this is going to be a liner lock. Now, the majority of the Cruise Evos are going to be frame locks. Uh, I did talk to Dave about this, and he says, yeah, just make sure people are aware. You know, if somebody wants a liner lock, you know, I'll, I'll try to make a way to build it for them. But the production, I don't want to say production, but the, the customs that he will be offering are going to be in the uh, frame locks. So what you have here is a beautiful bolstered look. Uh, titanium bolsters done in a very rich gold and bronze anodizing and then you have a polished lightning strike carbon fiber for the scales on both sides the custom pocket clip that is reserved only right now for the cruise evos it's a new custom design still bears the same logo that you would see Dun -dun -dun. i just happen to have a curtis in my pocket same uh reticle logo that you would see on the F3s, but as you see, a much different design overall. And my favorite part of the entire knife, what he calls the bridge backspacer. What a work of art that thing is. And I love how it tapers down into the frame. Just beautifully done. It's kind of like a floating backspacer, then it's raised up on the outer edges, and believe it or not, it's not uncomfortable. Plenty of room there, too, if you want to add a lanyard to the uh, butt end. Now, something that we're seeing that's uh, missing is Dave's signature spot pivot. Because you can't see the pivot at all. It's actually going to be hidden underneath the bolster. But another thing that makes this knife special, makes it unique. I don't know if you're ready for this. Oops. Keep in mind, these are not broken, and this and the BMF that I received came straight from Dave's bench to me, and uh, I haven't really played with them or anything. What you've got here is not just any Damascus blade, but you have a stainless steel Damascus. So now you have a Damascus that requires less upkeep. You don't really have to worry about it rusting or pitting. Beautiful mirror polish on the harpoon. Nice clean primary bevel there. A little bit of polish to the secondary, to the cutting edge. And a beautiful pattern. Just gorgeous. Now let's take a look at it from a little bit of a distance. What he's actually using is a uh, Randy Haas Triple H stainless Damascus. 
And there are not a lot of guys that are using stainless Damascus. Uh, one example is a knife that I have in my collection made by Brian Ty, which is Damasteel, which is, you know, the same thing. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a form of stainless Damascus. And what that allows you to have is a beautiful knife that has all of the intricacies and elegance of a Damascus without the worry of, well, I used the blade or I touched the blade. Now I've got to go wipe it down and clean it off and you know all this kind of good stuff. Somebody like me, I live in Miami. I live in a very humid climate. You know, my Damascus blades, like the newest one I just got, my, uh, my RJ Martin. That's an expensive ass knife. I don't want anything to happen to that blade. So I take very extra special care of it. And I use a little more of my EDC solution, my Aegis solution, uh, than I use on my other knives. Just a little bit more often, just to make sure there's not going to be any issues. With this, I wouldn't treat this any differently than I would any other standard stainless steel. That doesn't mean it cannot rust. That just means it's going to be a little bit more corrosion resistant. I'm still going to take care of it. I just don't have to be as on top of it as a standard Damascus. Oh. This is all heat anodized, by the way. So that's why you're going to get the shift in the tones. You're going to get lighter and darker bronze. It'll shift to golds and a little bit of purple in a few spots as well. Here is the liner lock. See if we can get a little bit of light in there. There we go. What a clean, smooth surface this is. It's easy to disengage that liner lock. You guys know it, uh, you know, it pains me sometimes to deal with stuff like, you know, you guys know I love RJ. I love my RJ Martins, but this is no fun to disengage. It just isn't. It usually pinches your thumb and it's not any fun. Dave did a great job here, created a good flipper. And what he did was he raised the liner lock. You'll feel it's a little bit taller than this and a little bit taller than this. So you can very easily disengage it without any issues whatsoever. It's a comfortable knife in the hand. As you see, it fills my hand. I wear a size large glove. Adequate jimping. It's nice and grabby without being sharp and obnoxious. And it's actually very reminiscent of the jimping on the F3. It's just more of it. And it's got a little bit more of a thumb ramp going on, whereas the F3, very slight ramp. And this definitely has more of a severe ramp. So let's take it and put it next to some more of Dave's work. So we're going to kind of go small, medium, and large here. Yep, that's the BMF. So there you go. There is an example of three different models that Dave makes. And, and does look how vastly different these are. Here's your everyday workhorse. I've had this for, you know, I don't even want to guess, but it's been a long time, uh, eight, nine months, I guess. And I've used the hell out of this thing. It's still holding a nice edge. It still works perfectly. Lockup is fantastic. Here is more of your gentleman's knife, everyday carry. Just gorgeous. And I believe he's going to be doing these in three and a half and four inch versions. This is the four inch, obviously. And then you've got your tank like overbuilt knife. That's really there to, I mean, if you want to beat the living hell out of it, you can. It's certainly uh, made to withstand that. But this is a show-off piece. But it's a show-off piece in a different manner than the Cruise Evo. This is an elegant show-off piece. This is one where when you pull this out, you know, you're not going to be doing any kind of hardcore work. At least most people aren't. Damascus is actually better suited for hard work than most other steels because it's, it's just made to be strong. It's made to be tough. People always want to think that it's delicate because it looks pretty, but it's actually not. Just notice that really nice polish across the spine of the blade. Sorry, I cut myself off there, but it just kind of caught my eye. So you've got the polished titanium that's been bronzed, and then the polished Damascus really looks gorgeous. Like how the blade, the harpoon, just drops in and it follows the exact shape of the frame. 
He's util utilizing as much of the frame as he can for the blade. We're not having a tremendous amount of overhang. He's tucked that blade in there nicely. I feel a couple of tiny little burrs from the copper wire and the lightning strike carbon fiber. Uh, I don't see it with my naked eye sticking out. You guys might see it here uh, through the HD lens. But uh, just two little pieces, one right there and one right back here. Everything else seems to be really, really nice all the way through. I felt a little burr there. Lightning strike carbon fiber, what a pain in the butt that's got to be to work with. So again, guys, keep in mind, these are going to be offered, uh, obviously not in this configuration. You're going to be able to get your hands on your own Cruise Evo in 3.5 or 4 inch uh, throughout 2014. But as I mentioned to you in the BMF video, there is going to be a spot of time where Dave is not going to make any knives whatsoever. Right now he's going into production. Uh, we're, we're, get, we're getting ready to start into January right now of 2014. He's getting ready to start going into production on more nanos to get those out of the way for the year. He's obviously going to be cranking out some of these, cranking out more F3s, the new F3 Warren Cliff. Uh, he's experimenting with Hamones on certain different blades. And then there's going to be a dry spell. So be warned. We all know what that means when there's a dry spell from any top flight maker. Already as it stands, because Dave closed his books for just a couple of months on the F3s, the F3 started going up $100 to $300 on the secondary market. And that's on a knife that he's regularly producing. When he goes and stops producing for a little while this, this upcoming year, who knows what's going to happen between these, the F3s, the Nanos, I have no idea. But we know when a good maker stops making for a while or just isn't distributing for a while, for whatever reason, everybody starts going ape shit with their sell prices. And next thing you know, a knife that should cost you, I don't know, $500 is going to cost you $800, $900, $1,000. So this would be the time. And while Dave is uh, able to accept orders, this is the time that I would put one in just to get it done, out of the way, then at least you know you're guaranteed a spot. At least, you know you know you're going to get your knife. You know you don't have to watch other people when all of these start delivering and you start watching their posts and going, oh man, I really want one now. And that's the time Then you're not going to be able to get one. And then somebody's going to go making a profit off of you when they go to sell it. That's no fun. So here is one last look at the beauty of this blade. You know, Dave doesn't really make a lot of pretty, pretty knives. Have you noticed that? They're really going to be, I don't want to say basic, because I think that people take that in, in, as an insult, but he makes less ornate knives for, you know, the common guy, the guy that's going to use a knife, because he really does intend you to use your knives. So there's not a lot of ornate, pretty, pretty Curtis knives out there. And I really hope that changes. You know, I don't want to see him obviously make a swing over into just making a bunch of art knives or something, but you know, I really like having something that's a little bit of pocket jewelry, something I can still use that I don't mind, uh, you know, abusing a little bit and cutting things with, because you guys know me. If I have something in my collection that I'm not going to use, I get rid of it very, very quickly. But it is really nice sometimes to have that piece of pocket jewelry. You know, I've done that recently. My uh, Todd Fisher Archangel is actually being finished up tonight as I'm making this video. You know, we made it a beautiful one with uh, presentation grade Mother of Pearl in it. You know, I got my R.J. Martin, the, the modulator. You know, it's uh, got the Timascus clip. It's got the Mother of Pearl inlay into zirconium. I've got uh, the Brian Tai I just showed you. That's all about beauty. So every now and then, you should treat yourself. You've already got a bunch of workhorse knives. I'm going to whip these up for some size comparisons for you, just so you have it. Treat yourself. Get yourself a nice pretty knife. I mean, this is, this is ridiculously pretty. Probably too pretty for a lot of people to comfortably carry. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that, man. Because I know I could take any knife in my collection and use it for whatever I want to use it for. So there's a quick size comparison against the tiebreaker and against the RJ Martin Q36. So it is a full size knife. But I got to tell you, 
I would I would think that this would carry nicely. It's got a little bit of weight to it. I'm not going to lie. It's not the lightest knife I've ever held. But it's pretty slim, even though it seems to fill the hand pretty nicely. Actually, no, it does feel pretty darn skinny in the hand. Nicely contoured on everything, on the titanium, on the lightning strike carbon fiber. But it just kind of almost disappears in the hand. It's not quite as slim as an F3, but pretty darn close. Boy, Dave sure makes a smooth action. And again, like I said before, this is not even broken in. Can I rock back on it? Yeah, it'll rock back and flip. Uh, this is definitely, it definitely likes you to preload and do a push button flip though. Whereas the F3 is something that you can just rip back on. You can preload that as well. Just not as easily. And the BMF. Yeah, that one, that one you want to, you want to rock back on that. I don't think you can really preload that without hurting your finger. So yeah, there you go. Once again, we'll leave that out there. Three great examples of what Dave does so well. So if you don't want something ornate and fancy, you don't have to do that. He can make it just as clean and sanitary and utilitarian as this in a Cruise Evo. If you want something insane, wild, and overbuilt, you go for a BMF. Or you're great everyday carry. I love my F3 so much. Great lineup of knives. The only one I don't have, unfortunately, here to show you is a Nano. Uh, I know Dave is... Well, Dave may have forgotten, but I did order a Nano uh, six months ago when he wasn't making them. I probably should remind him. Uh, so one of these days, you're going to see a little Nano here in my collection. It's actually going to have my Skull logo right up there. You see that right up there? Right up there? Instead of having the Punisher logo. So, yeah, one of these days we'll get it done. I'm in no big hurry. I have a few knives. I'm pretty happy. But uh, so definitely check out his website. Go check out his Instagram and his Facebook as well. He does a lot of work in progress pictures there. And even if it's not going to be the model of knife that you want, it may give you some inspiration with materials or the milling work that he's been doing lately, uh, the customizing of the colors. And the, he, he's doing electric anno as well as the heat anno. He's doing a lot of cool shit now. And he's really trying to broaden his horizons so go there and watch his works in progress and take that inspiration and have Dave build you something kick-ass, man. No matter what your needs are, I think he's pretty much got you covered. All right, guys, I'm out of here for now. I will see you on the next video.